We'll get there. Hi, welcome to EC Sports to Chicago and the surrounding suburbs. This is episode eight. Um, today we have a uh, uh, Anthony produce this show. Uh, we don't have our executive producer for uh, comments, but if we get any viewers that uh, comment, we will uh, try to get to you guys. Go ahead. All right. So first, we are going to cover the finals after last night. I think things may have gotten a little bit interesting. Maybe not. Um, we'll see what you guys have to say. As well as um, Addison Russell and the domestic violence uh, accusations. Um, Addison Russell got a smack of it. <laughs> then we will go over young athletes and trophies. And we will finish up with the usual talk of the 96 Bulls or the 17 Warriors. The difference with us is I was around for the 96 Bulls. This dude was like two. Right. So we'll probably just work with our take on it, except for everybody else's, which is what you see all the time, which makes our show different. So, That's correct. What you got? So... For the finals, um, I think it's been pretty much one-sided um, thus far. Uh -huh. um, last night got pretty interesting. They dropped almost a buck forty on them, you know, and and I think that you know it, it's sad because game three they they pretty, they gave the game away, yeah, um, which could have changed the. The tie completely. Obviously, today you'd be looking at a two-two matchup headed back to Golden State. You know, mm -hmm. it'd be it'd be awesome. But with that being said, I kind of there's here's my theory on it. My theory is this: if if they go back to Golden State and win, yeah, I I think it's going seven games. It is possible. I mean, you can't. I mean, last night was pride. Do you really? think that if Cleveland wasn't really trying, they really wanted to take a flight, go all the way back to Golden State to lose? No, they really have some pride and they want to win. I mean, they won last year. Obviously, you didn't have Kevin Durant. But you don't come in to game four and just lay down and be like, you know what, fuck it. They got us. You know, if they would have did that last year, then, you know, they won, wouldn't have won. Right. They have talent. You have to realize that. I mean... Uh, Kyrie is probably right now the best one-on-one -on -one player that I've seen in a while. He just, you can't guard him Definitely. at all. And, um, you know, I'm just, I just feel like uh, the Cavs said that Dream On saying that they want to celebrate on their court gave them something. I don't know what you need, but I got some bets out here in the streets. <laughs> so I need you guys to play. I haven't said anything because... For some strange reason, people always want to jump the gun and say it's over. It might be over, but last time I checked, they're still playing basketball. So until you know the confetti is dropped and everything is not over. Oh so. yeah, and this is this is great for the media too now because mm -hmm. then you got now you got this three one debate. Yep. Which then they bring last year up mm -hmm. saying hey. I kind of hate when they talk about like different teams because. You were talking Harrison Barnes and Kevin Durant. Right. This is a totally different that, situation. It's where not even close. Cleveland is the same, but I just feel like LeBron is just on another level. There was a time, I believe, in Game Two, I was watching it with my family. I'm just they're like looking at me crazy because I'm like, dude, don't. Pass. There was a point where LeBron should not have passed the ball. He was doing whatever he wanted and Kyrie just kept messing up that last what, yeah that second to last possession when yeah. he kicked it out to Corver that was a layup <sighs> see and I love the guy but that was yeah. a layup I mean what were they down were they down they were winning they were winning so see and and here's my thing but he described exactly what was happening and I agree with him you got Draymond driving and then you got, who was coming over to help? Uh, Steph was coming Steph. over to help. Yep. So he's getting double teamed. If he gets blocked, everybody says, who the fuck you got, Carter? Oh, oh Kyle Corbin in the corner. <laughs> so it's like, it, either way, <laughs> you know, it guys does make like sense. this It, it does make sense that. in a way. Mm -hmm. Because Corver's pass of, of shooting the three ball is just so so yeah. crispy. But we the thing is, is he's he's been like, 
I don't terrible know. He's been in the really, finals. Yeah, he's been really streaky. It's yeah. Cool. So, at the end of the day, what you really need to realize <laughs> is Cleveland is a a pro team. Okay, they're not going to. That last night showed you they're not just going to lay down. They're going to fly to Oakland and take it. Oh, with these situations, you got to take it one game at a time. Yeah. You know what? We just won. Let's build on that. And that's what they're going to do. Yeah. If they build on that, for the, if they win the next game. Back to Cleveland, that's what I'm saying. Game that's six. the thing. It's 1-1-1. One, one, one. It's not that 2-3-2 two, two shit no more. Right. So if they do that and then come back to Cleveland to tie it, I'm not going to reach for it, but all I'm saying is you still, you, you got to play the game. Yeah. I forgot who I, I think it was her. <laughs> you, you play to win the game. <laughs> right. So you have to I think the Warriors the in their heads, they're saying we got to win. The Warriors are we saying like, this, damn, we... We have to win this game. And then it wasn't like Cleveland won with the last second shot. No, they pounded like, them. We can literally sit here and be like, damn, that should be 2-2. Right. Cleveland just fell apart because they were like, oh shit, we're winning. And Kevin Durant's playing out of his mind. I mean, I've watched Kevin Durant since he came in. Dude is just playing out of his mind. He's not as good as all of you random, <laughs> I'm watching the finals fans see. He's not that good, but he's playing out of his mind right now. I'm giving him respect, but that everything he was shooting was like splashing. Like, oh, I'm just throwing <laughs> shit up. So, and the, the thing is, too, is it is so easy for a guy like that. Yeah. When 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 you can spread the floor to perfection, yeah. with even a stretch four, and then you have Curry and Thompson. Thompson's usually in the corner. Curry's mm-hmm. up top. Draymond's usually on the wing somewhere, just floating. Yeah, it just opens up the guy's six foot ten mm-hmm. with speed and athleticism. Yeah, I mean it opens the floor, and he just takes he waltzes the lane. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like. So, like some of those, some of those layups and dunks in game one and two, mm-hmm. those were like you put an average Joe out there and he does a layup. That's yeah. how open he is. True. You know, it's crazy. It's crazy. The biggest shot of his career, though, he did hit the other night. Wow. I got to give it to him. He doesn't hit big shots shit, ever, was and, crazy, and he bro. he just he just rose up and just knocked that thing down. I was actually extremely. Extremely shocked, especially yeah. because I personally felt he shot that on impulse. You he know? did. Hey, we're it losing. Was the way he shot, he was just like, "Fuck this." Yeah, <laughs> we're up two zero. We've been bust this shit, and that's what he did. You know, so I mean, if you want to be a champ, then that's what you got to do. Speaking of champs, thanks to champs for sponsoring these wristbands for DC uh, Sports. <laughs> so, um, with that being said, what do you <laughs> think is about to happen in the next game? Here's the thing. The bottom line is this. You, as the Cavs, cannot get down early. If you get down early, not only will that team uplift, but that crowd will eat you up in a minute. And that's the, that is the whole problem with the Cavs thus far on the road. They're even they're down seven. Mm-hmm. Then they're down four. Then they're down 12. Yeah. Then they're down six. Then they're down 25. And the crowd is just... One three ball hits. Yep. The crowd goes up. Then they show shots of Steph Curry's family. Ugh. I don't want to see them. Okay, I do. Them. Yeah, his his I wife, do. his mom is like, wow. Okay. His mom is his mom. she's so. But she's nice. <laughs> he said, I do. But I just, <laughs> ooh, I just feel like if they win this game. <coughs> It's, I'm looking forward to it. Get your popcorn, your nachos, whatever you eat, you know, and uh, just sit down and watch. If you enjoy basketball, that's the game to see because, you know, Cleveland didn't bitch up and leave. Just like Tristan Thompson said, you're not going to punk us. You ain't going to punk Tristan Thompson. <laughs> so He's um, a max player, watch yourself. He is. Um, I'm just looking forward to seeing, you know, what happens in that game. Um, what else you got? Next, I have Addison Russell with a shocking domestic violence. Did you get any of the intricacies of it? Like, what's the what's the focal point of it? All I heard was he's getting charged or investigated by the MLB. Yeah, so he's under investigation. Um, what I, my understanding of it? He's under investigation. Okay. And right now, he's yesterday he played. 
Mm-hmm. But he chose not to play the other night because he was that upset about it. He then said, this is completely false, and I'm, com- I'm extremely hurt by this. Okay. I'm not going to play tonight. How did it get in the news? Uh, his wife or something? It had to be. Reported. It's like this, man. When people say, um, I'm going to be a little graphic. When you say, oh, I fucked this girl, right? <laughs> Um, when someone comes to you and say, hey, uh, uh, man one, I heard you slept with woman two. How did you hear that? (laughs) Who was in the room (laughs) when the situation happened? You and the woman, okay? So no one else could tell but the people involved. So I feel like this. If my wife went to the police, first of all, I don't hit women. Let me, uh, preface that, but... If his wife <coughs> went to the police, it's in the news because of that. So he's probably hurt because his wife said something to someone that probably went there or she was the one. Um, and people these days, everything's different, you know. Back in the day when uh, kids got a spanking, it was a spanking. Now it's like, oh, my God, you beat your child, you're DCFS. going to jail. DCFS. DCFS. <laughs> Okay, I got spankings when I did stuff bad. That's what happens. I'm not saying that he spanked his wife. I'm just saying that nowadays, everything is to the max. If, say, he just pulled his wife by the wrist to get in the car, like, let's go. That's domestic violence. Right, if she starts screaming and stuff? Yeah. Like, no, I don't want to go. That's a husband and wife having an argument, and he's saying, let's go. Yeah, now, if he's, like, grabbing her by the neck and throwing her down, yes, that's crazy so it's it's a very slippery slope of i don't know what happened i don't know if she said something i don't know if she told her friend or family but you have to be very cautious uh in situations like this in 2017 unfortunately because some people have a lapse in judgment where even women it's not i hate it because it's always like Men, men, men. Women, I can tell you, women (laughs) are not, you know, they will swing on you. They will do a lot of stuff because, especially if they know you're not going to retaliate because you're a real man, they're going to do some stuff that you could consider domestic violence. So with him, you know, you don't know these people. They're athletes that you watch. All you know is what you see on the field. You don't know their personal life unless you're you know, friends or family of them. So people kind of kill me when they try to judge someone on their personal life based upon what they see in the news. You know right, I mean? right. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a very, very touchy mm-hmm. society nowadays. I mean, one false move and you, you could be in some serious trouble, especially exactly. if the message is conveyed to the public as something that is severe. Mm-hmm. Then you're you're in a lot of trouble. I think the the Cubs are taking this really really serious. I mean, I, I mean I've I've even heard possibly getting rid of them. Uh, just off an accusation, just, allegation. It's rough, I, and, and he's not even been playing at short. They've been putting Baez there so he could sit out. And he's upset about this. And Joe Madden, you know, obviously is a great manager. He he obviously supports his team, and he mm-hmm. said, you know. We don't know anything yet, yeah. so let's not jump to conclusion. Which is what you want your leader to do. Absolutely. I mean, it is what it is. Like you said, it's you, no one really truly knows the situation, but uh, I think that um, I think it's really shocking mm-hmm. that it's him. Yeah. Based upon what you see, right? You don't know him, right? He could be, you know? he could be psychotic. You're exactly. Right. So what you see of Addison is like. Oh boy, Addison Russell, he's a, you know, <laughs> white bread guy. Like, he doesn't do anything wrong. And then you go to, like, somebody like Bryce Harper. Well, he is a freaking hothead. I could see that happening. And that's just based upon what you see right. on the field. So, you got to be very cautious on what you see as opposed to, right. you know, what goes on. Which, by the way, on the field, it's like naturally you're two different people. Yeah. So, who knows? Mm-hmm. You know. So, I mean, if they get to a point where there's significant evidence that he did something, by all means, you know, you got to be punished yeah. uh, for your actions. But if it's a lot of just talk and 
uh, guesstimations, and then that's not fair for that man's career. And to be talking about trades and all of that when nothing is really brought to light is really tough. So, right, you got to watch what you're doing with that. I agree. So, I want to take this time to thank Tito's. Um, Tito's is phenomenal, yeah, delicious. It is great I like to vodka. call it Uncle Tito because when I'm around Tito's, mm-hmm. it's like being around that crazy uncle. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You just get, it's just, it's a great time yeah. all the time. And then you mix Tito with your auntie iced tea or something oh, and it's just delicious comes off great not to but, mention six time distilled gluten-free <laughs> phenomenal gluten free, gluten-free rock fucking gluten-free <laughs> uh, <laughs> 60 calories per glass if you mix it with the right concoction my there friend you go. take this notes fun. young athletes and trophies now Ugh. for myself i could definitely comment on this but i do want to hear your take first because you have a son? Yes, I do. Um, Who's an athlete. Exactly. So he brings home the trophies. I don't know what that's like, <laughs> you know, to watch this your is... kid bring home the, the fourth placer. Yeah. Um, my I, mean, I know son, I wasn't happy about it. When yeah, I was ever high. since he's been in uh, tackle, he has went to the game prior to the Super Bowl, so to speak. And I tell him, <laughs> "Are you are you happy with this? Do you are you happy that you played your heart out to lose in the game prior to going to the championship?" So I'm, I guess you can hear where I'm going. <laughs> this is you shouldn't get shit if you lose. <laughs> um, I don't give a damn. Uh, if you pay to, if you pay for your son to play, then that's what you're doing. You're paying for the equipment, you're paying for the coaching, you're paying for all of that, um, and, and you're paying for that, yeah, a trophy. and a plastic trophy. So at the end of the day, you need to make sure that you know, first of all, that you're working with your child, you know, because there's a lot of parents that feel like, all right, soccer mom dropped their son off at practice. All right, TJ, have fun (laughs) with the coaches. And then they come back five minutes before, after going to Chipotle for dinner and bringing it and uh, going home as he lazily goes through practice and doesn't do anything. Right. That is what we always call the pussification of America. Because when I was in school, we didn't get trophies. I was in a Catholic league. We practiced twice a day in the summer. 90 degrees uh, we drank water out of a hose and we worked our asses <laughs> off uh, to be men the, these kids these days are freaking uh, flop wearing uh, social media idiots that don't understand what it is to be an athlete or a man or anything you know why because they've been given everything here's a trophy at least you guys tried so in my opinion, I think it's a joke. Um, I think that you should teach your children, male or female. I have two kids. I have a boy and a girl, and my girl will be playing tennis. She'll be doing something um, to uh, be active. I keep my kids in sports to be active. Uh, the reason that I want them to excel is I'm not going to spend my off time with my children teaching them a sport to suck. So, Anthony will tell you I work with my son uh, tirelessly to get him better. And he can tell you my son's a very good listener, uh, he's coachable, and he wants to get better. He doesn't uh, bitch and moan, he just, you know, does it because he knows, you know, we're trying to make him better. Uh, I wish I had a father uh, around his age. I didn't start playing football the freshman year. I don't know where I would be if I started at his age. So at the end of the day, to answer your topic, straightforward, uh, the pussification of America is pissing me off with these stupid fucking trophies. I agree. You know, and, but see, Why don't you give him a trophy with a thumbs down? Loser. Here, <laughs> you just lost. There's your plastic trophy, mommy. See, and I agree. I agree. But then I also think this, okay? So, you have kid number one and kid number two. Kid number one, he works hard. He loves sports. He plays his ass off. 
He practices. He wants a win. Then you have kid number two. He wants to wear a jersey. Mm-hmm. He wants to just, you know, hey, I'm on a football team or a baseball team. Daddy, and, look at me. Or my friends are playing, so I'm going to play with Johnny, Jimmy, and Joey mm-hmm. because they're going to play. And then after school, if they go play and I'm not included, then what else am I going to do, right? Mm-hmm. So, hey, let's do this. they got to play me at least 20 plays. <laughs> Yeah, these new rules, at least a certain amount of plays, blah, 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 blah. you got the parents behind the coaches saying, why is my kid playing? The coaches should turn around. You know why? Because they're not being paid to take that shit and say, because your kid sucks. That's what they need to say. But they have to be nice. We're going to get him in, John. We're going to get him in, Steve. Give us a second. And then when you don't, or you do at the 20 plays, they go home and write a letter. You know, da, 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 da. you know, I'm not going to get too far into it, but the coaches in these youth football leagues, they don't get paid, people. They're not like, oh, I'm um, I'm getting paid here, and then we're going to move up to high school to get paid, and then college. No, they're either parents or people like Anthony who just love the game and want to coach kids. So you have to understand what these people go through. So when you just drop your kid off at practice to go, you know, <laughs> let off some steam on your porch you know while they're gone for an hour and a half understand that that's not really helping your child okay when there's been times where Dylan's had practice and he stunk up practice and then we just practice another two hours that's not tough he's 12 he's got plenty of freaking stamina you know so you got to understand that you know you got to help your kids and make them understand the importance of being active and knowing what winning and losing is right because okay so going back to what i was saying right mm-hmm. you got two different kinds of kids yep. me personally growing up um most of the time they handed out trophies no matter what mm-hmm. but here's the thing though this is where the distinguish of the two kids come in yeah when they hand me a trophy that says fourth place on mm-hmm. it third play. Oh, your team took third? Mm-hmm. Guess what? <laughs> I, I, the trophy gets thrown in the back of the only, car. Only time you really, I mean, I guess you could be like, alright, you took third is if you get like a bronze medal. In the right, Olympics. you take third out of like ten or... Yeah. Then you're in like, the Olympics. Ah, it's, 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 you know, it's you decent. Know? But here's the thing though, what I'm saying is the two different types of character, there's the kids who they just grab the trophy and admire it because they made it through the season yeah. Johnny and Jimmy and Joey played, and hey, it's awesome. Yeah. Or there's the kids who say, okay, here's a fourth place trophy. I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with this. Exactly. I'm embarrassed to put it in my room. Exactly. So go ahead and throw it in the Tupperware exactly. box, and let's get out of it. Totally. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So just keep, you know, if give out the trophies if you want to give out the trophies, but the real athletes are going to take the trophies, and you're not going to see their fourth place trophies because exactly. no one cares about them. Exactly. And I can say that about Dylan. Dylan doesn't have any of his trophies, like, all on the wall. Because, you know, he wants to win. You want to get to the end of the season where you have a real trophy saying, damn, we're the best team in this league. Right, Regardless exactly. of the situation. So parents need to understand that, you know, we're in America. Everybody is so like, well, oh, my gosh, why is that coach talking to him like that? Like, <laughs> just stop it, man. Just don't put your kid in it if you can't deal with it. So, uh, <laughs> you ready for your debate? Yes. 96 Bulls. Okay, that's me. I was three years of age. That's, <laughs> that's me. Crazy. <laughs> Warriors, 17. I'm now 23 years of age. Okay. So. All right, so my 96 Bulls starting lineup. You have uh, Luke Longley. From Australia, right? You have Scotty Pippen, top 50, from Central Arkansas. From Southeast Oklahoma State, Dennis Rodman. Okay? <laughs> you got Ronnie Harper starting at the point. Lockdown defender, Ronnie. Yeah, lockdown defender. Oh, yeah. From North Carolina. At guard, 6'6", six, six, Michael Jordan. Um, they went 72-10 and 10 against real teams. Michael Jordan 
and those guys had to play against Carl Malone and John Stockton, top 50. They had to play against freaking, who are the other team? The New York Knicks every freaking year. <coughs> Reggie Miller and the freaking Indiana Pacers. Allen Iverson. He's one of your top five of all time. Oh, he is. Definitely. They and That I've seen. They didn't lose. They lost 10 games. I don't even hear the team last year. That's bullshit. 73-9. and nine. Yeah, who'd you play? I know. Who did you play? Come on. The Philadelphia 76ers? But what about this team, though? This is a tough team, dude. They're tough. All right, so. They can shoot who's gonna guard all Mike? night. Who's going to guard Mike? Because Mike can shoot all night. Who would you put on Mike? Who would I put on? I don't give a fuck about that team. The <laughs> team sucks, okay? <laughs> fuck your team. Right. I don't like the Warriors guard, at you, all. You, you're saying that they would beat the 96 Bulls. I'm saying I think he'll be pretty damn close. All right. Because of the bench, too. I okay. think the bench. First of all, I'll put Dennis Robin on Kevin Durant. He can pull. He'll he'll take him out of the game in a second. You think? Yeah. You think, Dennis Rodman, the, you think he had the speed to stick with Kevin? Dennis Rodman is in the Hall of Fame for rebounding and defending. He didn't score <laughs> shit. That's, that's he is correct. in the Hall of Fame. I'm telling you, I don't think that Bulls team matches up well. I'm telling you. I wish and I you could. you got their fucking coach You know how on much I bench. love the Bulls. You have their coach on the bench, coming off the bench, shooting every three that he gets and making it. Yeah, Steve Kerr was on the 96 Bulls, young ones. I can't yeah. stand that guy. Yeah, you can't stand that guy. But I'd like for you to tell me why you think this team has a chance against the Bulls. I think they match Scottie up Scotty right? Pippen will lock fucking Steph down. <laughs> Scotty Pippen on Steph Curry? You think Scotty, Mike was you think on Scotty the all Yeah. Yeah? Scotty yeah, but that guarded how? magic when the Bulls were fucking sucking it See, dry. See, so you got you got Scotty guarding. Dennis, I got Scotty guarding Steph. Right. Dennis guarding. What's his name? Durant. Durant. And then I got Mike guarding freaking Kevin. What's his name? Thompson. I don't even know these dudes' names. Clay Thompson. Yeah, no one has the guard. But then fucking who's guarding? Ron Harper. Who's guarding McGee then, bro? No, like, seriously. In the words of Shaq, JaVale McGee is a bum. <laughs> you bum. Who's guarding Shut him, up. though? Who's guarding him, though? Who's guarding When is he coming in? He's Or Zaza. Which one? Oh, my God. The Luke size Longley. differential. Luke Longley is what I'm talking two. about. Luke Longley. But then that means you got... You got Ron Harper on Draymond. Draymond ain't a fucking... Who the hell is he? Who is what is he on offense? I like Draymond a lot. You can like on offense? Please every like time he both. shoots. I like him on both I ends. I say please shoot. <laughs> please shoot. Shoot that. I like him on both ends. I got that from the NBA. I heard it a long time ago with the Lakers. I think it was Lamar Odom. I was on the floor and press. And uh who was about to shoot? Somebody on the Bulls was about to shoot like a terrible I think it was uh it was a bad player. It was like Eddie Robinson or something, and Lamar Odom coming down the court. He's like, shoot that shit. <laughs> so every time Draymond, shoot that shit, please do. Dude. You really think yes. he's that bad, huh? Look, he's, I think oh, he's a stretch four, bro. Stretch four. I think he's solid. On offense? Oh, I'm not talking about defense. I'm telling you, both ends. He'll probably like have game. to guard Mike. Both ends, I like his game. Bro. Kevin got a guard. Scotty, Scotty will work his ass out. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, get every I don't think de- I don't think Dennis I don't think Dennis could guard Kevin though. I don't. If he brings here's here's why if he brings Dennis out on the perimeter, okay, then put, I'll put Scotty on Kevin. Then. All right, I'll I think that's Scottie better. I'm not gonna have. I'm not Scotty gonna. Out on the but this is the thing. I'm not gonna waste Dennis Rodman on Zaza Pachulia. That's all I'm saying. No, you put Longley on him. All right, so who is Dennis going to guard? Dennis is a... Dennis Dennis guards Draymond. Of, why, though? What do you... Why not? Either way, the Bulls would... I'll tell you, you want to see six. a fight on the court? You you watch Draymond guard Dennis. Dennis will get him out the game. Oh, he'll... Yeah. You know, 100%. He'll put his freaking... I, help right there. 
in his freaking back and just yank his ass See, just every time. I agree. I would that I agree. Happened. Okay. So who wins? Cause Steph ain't dude, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> Steph can't Mike I'm just saying, man, you didn't see it. I did. I just don't know who. No how one's they're guarding gonna, Mike. They're not though, gonna just. Sure. No one's guarding Mike. They can't guard LeBron. So you gotta understand. They can't guard man. Kyrie, to be quite honest. Exactly. You gotta understand. When well, you got Michael Jordan, and then you got Scotty, and then you got Dennis, and then you got a lockdown defender in Ron Harper. You can't even like you put Ron Harper on Draymond. That's a waste. You gotta put Ron Harper on like one of the two guards. Ron Harper. I yeah, think, you go I think you got to put Ron Harper on. Uh, on I play uh, Ron. I start Ron on stuff. Yeah, exactly. But then you got to put Mike on who? Clay. All right, and then you which is a, which is a simple <laughs> task because Clay just yeah, stands on the corner. Exactly, and then you got Scottie Pippen. You think Kevin Durant can get Scottie Pippen? No. All right. I think I think yeah. I mean, I think he could. I think he could obviously he's not gonna do what play him. No, hell no. So no chance. Keep talking, guys. Keep talking about oh, what this team can do and all of that. And uh, you're going to get your feelings hurt. So we went a little over. We're going to um, end this show on that. He didn't really have a debate at all with that crappy-ass team. But um, <laughs> I'm we'll telling you, my squad, <laughs> his this squad. team, I don't like the Warriors. You'll got to like them. I don't like them at all. But in this case, the Warriors, mm -hmm. I think they could. I got Bulls and Six, so um, we're gonna start uh, broadcasting probably most likely this <laughs> weekend. Wednesday night is just a night where it's like it's night, so we're gonna start fresh um, live at ten forty-five on Saturdays, and uh, then we'll go from there. And also, we're gonna start doing some shows where it's not mainly basketball, but we're talking about other topics because yeah. this is obviously the dead time in sports. But to be a legitimate sports show, you got to be able to talk about everything. So with that being said, sorry we went over, but, you know, uh, join us back next week. We should have a champion. I don't know how the uh, schedule goes. Do you got it? Like what the final schedule is? I don't. But I want to say possibly a Monday game is the next one. No? I thought they were playing Sunday. But we're going to check that out to see the final schedule. And um, depending on what happens... Maybe we'll have a finals show, or we'll have like some semblance of an idea of who won. Because right now, the way Cleveland's playing, at least last night, we might be going quicker. So, with that being said, we'll talk about it on the next show. Join us next week. Enjoy this sports. Saturday, 90 degrees. Find a rooftop. Crazy, find yo. your nearest rooftop. Get yeah. it going. Have a couple cocktails. Play some <laughs> tunes. We'll, we'll some talk Tito's. to you. All right. <laughs>